Well, welcome everybody to uh, Math Monday. Um, I'm Scott Kim, your host. So today I'm going to introduce you to Bongard problems. If you're wondering who that is, Bongard's the name of a Russian computer scientist. Th these p problems are a lot like uh, spot the difference problems, which you might have seen in newspapers. Start with uh, one that's a little bit on the, on the simpler side. Um, so the question is, how are the things on the left different from the things on the right? Another way of saying it is, what property do all the, th and don't answer yet, because give other people a chance to think about it. What property do all, each of the things on the left have that make them different from each of the things on the right? And a couple rules, the order of the things doesn't matter, or the position of, of the things doesn't matter. Okay. Um, go ahead and type in chat what you think uh, the difference is. I guess I wasn't very clear. I would say like, what is the property that all the things on the left have that makes them different from the things on the right? And we see left side have three sides, right has four sides, every shape on the left is uh, left is terminals, <laughs> right is quadrilaterals. Sure, those are different ways of saying it. I'm gonna give you a little one that's a little trickier. Same question though, what is, what are the, all the things on the left, each of the things on the left have in common that make them different from the things on the right? Some of you may have it, some, some of you may not. These are tricky, so if you don't get it, in the amount of time. I'm gonna move on. And if you have an idea, go ahead and, and, and type it in. Oh, that's funny, Carl, Carl gave an annoying answer. The ones on the left, you know what they have in common? He says, they're on the left. <laughs> <laughs> triangles, are the, triangles are bigger or triangles, yes. Uh, so many people got it. Uh, the, the items on the left all have a triangle bigger than the circle. And it's the other way around on the right. Now, I have an interesting question. What, uh, what's, what's an answer that you considered that turned out not to be true, but uh, some, another guess that you, uh, can you type that into chat? I'm curious what other things you might have found, thought of on the way to getting the right answer. Uh, the answer, what else did you consider? The number of sides. Yeah, it could, it could have been three and four on each side. Only one has a shape inside the other. Yeah, it could have been inside and outside. Okay, well, let's move on to the next one. I'm gonna give this one in stages. This one's, uh, this one's the hardest one I'm gonna give you. And we'll start with, okay, I'm just gonna give you the first example here. Now, what do you think the uh, difference is? Well, so far, the orientation is the same, but the number's different. So my first guess is that the right side will have one more than the left side. And that's yeah. All. yeah, you add one to what it has. Okay, uh, here's the next example. Yeah, you add something, like in the first one you added another, like, bead or something, and in the second one you added another spot. Okay, let's look at the third, third example. Seems like the ones on the left are starting with one white and then two white and then three white before the space or black, whereas on the other side, got one fewer before the black each time? Well, I thought you were growing the, the white and the black by one each time, but then this last one blew that out because the number of black didn't change, only the number of whites changed, right? Right. Okay, so back to the drawing board. Hmm. Okay, so here's all the other examples.
But order doesn't matter. Yeah, so the way I introduced it made you think that the upper left one corresponded to the upper left one on the other. Uh -huh. But the order doesn't matter. So it's the, whatever's true is true of all of these here, and it really is not about the correspondence between the two sides. I'll give you a big hint in the interest of- Oh, no hints, no hints. <laughs> I think you can cover your ears. <laughs> okay. well, I'll tell you this, I will give you the answer in the slides. So if you want to work on it, you can. I will give you one hint, which is the very first slide I showed you, um, you know, the upper left here and the upper right here is a big hint, but not in the way you think it is. Right. Okay, so I'm, I would say these are, and it's also not as complicated as some of the mathematicians in the crowd might think. It doesn't involve like squaring a number or some, the Fibonacci sequence or anything like that. Here's a couple other examples to show you. Um, I've enjoyed making up Bongard problems. Here's one I made up, just using numbers. You should be able to solve this one pretty easily. All evens and all odds. Any of the kids have it? Yes? Hannah? The left side has all evens, the right side has all odds. That's right. And here's one I made up using the letters of Math Monday. Huh. There are eight different letters in Math Monday. And uh, so since I challenged myself to uh, come up with something where there are four letters on the left and four letters on the right. And here, the answer has to do with the shapes of the letters. These are funny, uh, you know, some people get it fast, some people get it more slowly, but the big hint is try drawing the letter in your imagination. Any of the kids have it? <laughs> see, some, some, who has you want to type it in? You want to type it in or just say, uh, let the kids yeah, say yeah, it? Why don't you type it in? Okay. If you don't want to see the answer, then you don't have to look at chat. Yeah. Okay. Now let's move on. It's uh, good. We're, uh, we've got 15 minutes left. I want to give you a chance now to make up your own Bongard problems and show them to everybody else. And you will need two sheets of blank paper. The paper is not essential. If you don't have any paper, don't worry about it. What you will need is eight different small objects. Um, the size of an apple or maybe a little smaller. And um, put out the two sheets of paper. I'll show you what I'm doing. Uh, let's see, I need to um, stop sharing my screen. Here I have two sheets of paper. I'd like you to do this. These, the papers here, I'm not gonna write on them. They're just stages. And I've chosen some objects to put on them. Get eight objects. Uh, as I'm showing this, you can go, go get them yourself. And arrange them so the objects on one page are different from all the objects on the other page. All of these have a property, have something in common that makes them different from all of the things on this side. If you can, it helps to use objects that are clear what, it's easy to see what they are. Okay, does anybody have a, a puzzle that they've worked out. If you do, you raise your hand or put your hand in front of the scene like this. And you can present it to everybody else. And if not, you can keep working on yours until you have a puzzle. What do you have here? Um, should I say the other related? Maybe tell them what the objects are, but don't tell them how they're uh, unique. Um, okay. Well, black pencil, yellow sponge, uh, yellow, Lego eraser, a Lego eraser, Rubik's cube, and um, a color, a watercolor pack. And, and Rebecca's, um, what's cool is uh, you didn't have eight objects, but you have uh, six and that's fine. It's enough to, uh, a very nice one, Rebecca. I see what you're doing. 
but I want to give everybody a chance to answer. We've got a one guess, flexible and not flexible. That's interesting. The erasers in the sponge are flexible, but the pen is not. Flexible. Aria says on the right are erasers. What do you think, Rebecca? Um, the sponge is an eraser. Okay. I think Rubik's Cube for me was the big hint. There's another example. Yeah, if you put more objects there, that's a good good one too. Is there multicolored versus things that are solid colored? Yeah. Yep, that's it. Oh. Nice. Thanks, Rebecca. Who else has a puzzle they'd like to share? I have one. Can you hear me at all? Sure. Can you? Hi, Jeannie. Hi. Hi. Okay. Well, here we go. I don't know if you can see all that. Very good at showing this. Okay. It's split down the middle here. Okay. Can you see it all? Oh, and here's this little guy. So the four four objects on each side, right? Yeah. There's four here, and uh -huh. there's four to here. And there's there's your. <laughs> I dream of genie. <laughs> dream of genie model for those <laughs> TV series. I thought too. Yeah, one of many. Let me tell you. I have one of uh, the one that I can't quite understand is the object in the uh, next to genie. This? Yeah. What is that? There. It's a dragon from. Um, what was it? Is it? Um, Dolls on one side and like nature in the other? No, not quite. Sort of, but not quite. Is it like a scene or like display and then the other side is like toys or something like that? Well, it's, no, not quite. Versus smaller? What can you say about the I'm sorry, what? Fiction versus nonfiction. There you go, you're getting closer. Yeah, I think that's pretty much, should yeah. I say what it is? Yeah, I'm thinking versus realistic. Real things, yeah, that you find in life. And these are things that you don't really find in, life, in real life, so. I was thinking big versus small because if I look over to the right, they look smaller. Yeah, that's probably the way I'm holding it, too. I'm not getting a very good view, but, you know. Yes. Something, uh, the additional challenge, uh, if you want to keep playing this, is you take those same objects and split them into two groups in a different way. Yeah. Anybody have, have, have a puzzle they'd like to share? I have one. I have one. Probably, yeah, go ahead. Okay. This is Hannah. Yeah, show us your puzzle. Ooh, nice. Okay. I think I have it. I understand. And round and not round. Uh, no. Except it is. But then is it sports and then on the other side, school? Uh, almost. Move versus round move. Games and games in school. Uh, yeah, this is kind of games, but that's not supposed to be school exactly. Creativity. Uh, almost. By the way, this is an eraser. Huh. So is one. Uh, can, can, can you tell me what the round things are? Uh, this is a ball. Okay. And this is a magic eight ball. And this is a frisbee. Um, can you tell me what the can you tell me what the ones on the left side are? Because it looks like the marker you can take apart. The scissors you can yeah. cut paper apart. And this is an eraser. But it doesn't take things apart. Hmm. It does get rid of stuff though. Hmm. Well, it, it might be something, oh, I don't know. Here, I could also add this in, I guess. 
That's a pencil also. Oh. Mm. Would you describe the left one as like, because um, they're all tools, I would think, but the ones on the left are made of more than one piece or part to, const to construct it. Mm, no, because the magic eight thing has more than one piece. I'm stumped. So, yeah, Logan, I'm thinking what you're thinking. Can you give us a hint? Um, this is kind of like supplies, but you make something sort of on this side. Oh, creation tools and sports tools. Close. It's like art something. This is hard. Is it art versus sports? Uh, this is art, yeah. Art. And boy, oh, that thinking ball. Art versus game. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, sports didn't quite work for the match gate ball. Okay, well, I encourage you to keep playing this at home. I want to wrap up with a few things, and then uh, those who uh, want to go can, can go. Uh, so, a few words to know. Um, a group of things in mathematics is called a set. The things uh, on each side and uh, things in your set are called the members of the set. And if the uh, things in your set all have something in common, uh, you call that the, uh, the, pro the members all share a property. In this case, the mem members all share the property that uh, the color is black. So you can use those words when you're talking about um, the set. And if this reminds you of the game set, yes, we're going to play that in a future session. I love set. Me too. Yeah. Um, let's see. I'm going to share my screen again. I want a couple ending things. We will send out a replay. And um, uh, here's, you can go, if you want to play more Bond Guard problems, here's a a huge list compiled by Henry Fondalis of 333 Bongard problems, including the 100 or so original problems by Bongard himself, who was a, he was a Russian computer scientist interested in writing a computer program to, uh, do, to recognize patterns. The sort, of, the sort of work we've been doing is the, one of the hardest things possible for a computer to do. It's, comparatively easy for them to play chess, but when you throw them in a situation where you say, recognize the pattern and it could be anything, that's really hard for a computer. It's easier for humans to do that than computers. Is that why, um, that's why when we have to answer the question, is this, um, are, are you a bot and you have to click all the ones that are traffic light or a mm -hmm. bus, You're, we're trying to teach the computers how to, you know, do these kinds of things, get smarter and smarter, right? Something like that. Yep. Yeah. So that that was what interested Bongard. That's also introduced what interested uh, Douglas Hofstadter, who popularized Bongard problems in his book, um, uh, Gödel Escher Bach. And uh, the, you can get references to uh, all those things and look them up. Um, That's awesome. If you have any questions, this is my email address, scott at scottkim.com.